What is life? For us patients, dreams, success and careers seem insignificant. We only have one wish. Get better. You are listening to Real Life After Cancer Podcast. Hello. Welcome to Real Life After Cancer Podcast. This is G, your host as usual. And we are now in final part of medical history. So during August 2021, I felt that something wasn't too right. I wrote a will for myself so that if anything happened, there's someone to execute it. As for November 2021, which is around half a year later that me and my ex-partner broke up. I decided to sell my portion of the house. It didn't come easy. She didn't want it at first. She wanted me to continue paying. I was furious at the time. A lot of emotions, a lot of quarrels happened. I wasn't even allowed to go into master bedroom and take the things that belong to me. I was really furious at that time. I'm glad that I can say it so peacefully and calmly now maybe I have not forgiven her but I chose to forgive myself and let go of all the emotions let go of all the negative ones the anger the frustration the unfairness the ridiculous. There are a lot of things happened. I was glad that my sister helped me out through the process. She helped me out in moving things from the house. However, at that time, I wasn't able to control myself. My emotions were everywhere. You can imagine how it feeds the lump. The lump grew so big and spreading so fast my period stopped. I had breathing difficulties. I wasn't even able to walk from the living room to the dining room without stopping and catching breath. Was it worth it? If you ask me, I would say no, no, it cost my health. That was the lowest point of my health. My hormones went chaotic. My body went chaotic. Fast forward to February 2022. We were glad that we found a professional.
professor that helped us out with admitting to a Sunta hospital and get all the medical checkup done. So, officially, I was diagnosed lymphoma, edema, and COVID at that time. That was how the first episode of Real Life After Cancer podcast on Room 6105. At the time, I reconciled with my sister, which I found ridiculous at myself. Why did I choose to believe someone that I met just a few years time instead of my sister, whom I have knew since a lifetime? So after getting medical checkup and proper diagnosis, we were allowed to come back to Malacca. We chose an alternative treatment instead of the usual one. I know this might cause a lot of questions to a lot of people, but I want to say that there's no right or wrong. There's consequences and responsibility that me as a patient and my dad and my sister as a family member and also a Chinese physician as well, a healthcare person as well. We have to take those responsibilities and those consequences. must be hard for my dad and my sister. No surgeon in this world who want to have surgery on their family members. So it must be hard for my dad and my sister to treat me. I respect them and I love them. They chose this method not because they are Chinese fiction. We have sat down and have meetings and discussions on what's good for me, on what's less painful for me, maybe I should say. Going through alternative medicine doesn't mean that it doesn't have pain. It has. My lungs grew smaller each day, but they are liquids as well. So recently, the liquids weren't fast enough to get rid out of my body. So I was in pain. So there are consequences as well that we have to bear. It doesn't mean that we rejected chemo and radiotherapy, meaning to say that I've given up on treatment. No. I've never given up on living. I know how precious life is. I just chose this alternative way for myself. It was a tough one. So, during treatment, there are also things happen. For example, I had bell palsy during April 2022. Bell palsy is also the same virus as 
lymphoma cancer and also the shingles that I was diagnosed with. I was thankful that it recovered within three weeks under the care from my sister and my dad. So, until today, it's kind of like a self-recovery journey that includes meditation, journaling, and also sharing about my life after cancer. I'm sharing this because I do hope that I can give some hope to those that are facing the same issue as me. Maybe it's your family members, maybe it's your friends. I do hope that we can all go through this together. You are not alone. As you can see in this episode, I stresses a lot about patient and family relationship and things that we have to make decision about. It was quite a simple one for us because there's only four of us in the family. Imagine if it's a big family, the scenario will be chaotic. Imagine the hospital where the dad is suffering from the illness and there's like seven or eight siblings each having their own opinion, quarreling and saying that their decision is the best. Imagine the one lying in bed. The dead will be so helpless. I'm saying this to create awareness because it is so real and people don't talk about it because it is a hard topic. But I want you guys to realize that this is happening. And when this happens, please take a step back, relax. Everyone wants the best. But we need to think what the patient wants best. Ask the patient because ultimately it is what the patient has to go through. Today is a heavy hearted sharing as well. I do hope that you take it lightly. And that's all for today. Thank you for listening. Next week will be a light-hearted one, I promise. You're listening to Free Life of the Cancer Podcast. This is G, signing off.